So again, when you have a large number of outcomes for a probability experiment, uh, making tables or tree diagrams is um, uh, too cumbersome, too difficult, in which case we use our combinations of permutations to enumerate all outcomes of an experiment. And that also goes for enumerating the outcomes of a sample, uh, of a sample space, uh, and also of a particular event whose probability we're trying to compute. Then we basically take the number of ways an event can occur and divide it by the total number of ways that a sample space can occur or the total number of outcomes in the probability experiment to compute our actual probability. All right, here's an example. Um, Stacy has the option of selecting three books to read for a humanities class. Uh, the suggested book list consists of 10 biographies and five current event books for a total of 15 books. So she has 15 books to choose from, and she has to select three to read for her humanities class. Stacy decides to pick the three books at random, find the probability that all three books will be biographies. Um, I have a question for you, ladies and gentlemen. The three books that Stacy plans on choosing from the 15 books available uh, do you think order in which she chooses these book matters? No. It probably doesn't matter. I don't see where order, you know, is indicated anywhere in this situation. Uh, so, you know, it really doesn't matter what order you choose the three books. The bottom line is you're going to read them all anyways. Okay. Um, and we're assuming the books are all independent of one another. Now, I mean, if you had like an algebra sequence, let's say algebra one book, algebra two book, and algebra three book, yes, order would matter then. You'd probably want to read the algebra one book, then the algebra two, and then the algebra three book in that order. But we don't have any order or distinction with these choices of these, these books here. Okay. All right. So we're trying to figure out the probability, okay, that all three books will be, all three books that are randomly selected are biographies. Well, ladies and we need to, first of all, try to enumerate how many different ways can we choose three biographies from how many available? How many biographies do we have that are, that are available in the pool of books? We have 10 biographies, do you agree? Now, order does not matter. So how can we enumerate all the ways of choosing three biographies from 10 biographies if order does not matter? Would we use a combination or a permutation? What do you think? A combination. Combination. So it'll be 10 in combination with three. 10 biography books in combination with three biography books. And there you go. This is going to be the numerator of our probability that we're going to compute. This is There's 120 different ways of choosing three biography, bo biography books from 10 biography books if order does not matter in how we select them. Divided by, now we need to figure out of, of the 15 books that we have total, you know, 10 biographies and five current event books, of the 15 books we have to choose from, how many ways can we choose three books from 15 books if order doesn't matter? That would also be a what? A combination. That's going to be 15 in combination with three. So there's 455 different ways of choosing three books from 15 books if order does not matter. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the probability that Stacy will select three biographies, okay, where order does not matter, uh, if choosing the books at random, would be the total number of ways of choosing three biographies from 10 biographies if order does not matter, which is 120. That was computed back here, 10 in combination with three, divided by 10 in com uh, 15 in combination with three the total number of ways of choosing three books from 15 books, if order doesn't matter. And you have your probability. So there's about a 26% chance that if Stacy randomly selects three books from these 15 books, that all three of them will be biographies. Any questions how we computed that probability? Okay. So there's about a 74% chance that at least one of the three selections will not be a what biography. 
All right, that's a classic example, uh, utilizing our combination uh, function to compute a probability. Can you go back to the last page for one moment, please? This one right here? Yes. All right, there's 15 in combination, excuse me, there's 10 in combination with three ways of choosing uh, what? 10 of uh, the choosing uh, biographies. Do you agree? Because we have 10 biographies to choose from. We're going to choose three of them. Yep. Okay. Thank you. 120 different ways of choosing three biographies from 10 biographies if order does not matter. So we divide 120 then by 455, which is the total number of ways of choosing three books from 15 books that we have all together uh, to choose from. All right. Let's look at another example. Example two, what is the probability of getting four aces when drawing five cards? Okay, what's the probability of getting four aces when drawing five cards from a standard deck of 52 cards? Well, first of all, how many ways can we draw four aces? How many ways is there to draw four aces if order does not matter? Anybody? How many ways is there to draw four aces if order does not matter? Well, it seems to me that there would be one way. Do you agree? Only one way to draw. If you're dealt five cards, there's only one way to get all four aces if order doesn't matter. So there is one way to get four aces. Okay, so the key observation here is that we need to get all four aces in the deck, and there's only one way to do that. After we have four aces, we still have a fifth card to choose from. From how many cards? Well, there would only be 48 cards left in the deck because we already selected our four aces. So 52 minus four is 48 cards remaining. Therefore, using the fundamental counting principle, ladies and gentlemen, um, how many ways can we select four aces? There's one way. And how many ways can we then select a fifth card? There would be 48 ways. So there's one times 48 or 48 possible hands that have 48 that have four aces in them. There's 48 possible five card hands that have four aces present. And again, the order in which the aces are present or selected does not matter. Does that make sense? There's 48 possible five card hands that would have four aces. Okay, that's our numerator of our probability uh, ratio. Uh, but now we have to figure out how many ways can we choose five cards from 52 cards if order does not matter? Well, that would be 52 in combination with five. So therefore our denominator of our probability ratio is gonna be 52 in combination with five, which is there's 2,598,960 different ways of choosing five cards from 52 cards if order does not matter. Could you imagine trying to enumerate all those possibilities using a tree structure or a table? That is so not happening. Do you agree? And so, ladies and gentlemen, when situations get large like this, we're at the mercy of enumerating things by either using our combination function or our permutation function, because diagrams and tables basically fall flat on their face. So, therefore, the probability of getting four aces when dealt five cards is going to be 48 divided by 2,598,960, which is a very small probability, which is 0 0.0000185. And if you wanted to convert this into a percent, you'd move your decimal point two places to the right here. And that's not even close to being close to being close to being close to 1%. Do you agree? 1% would be right here, one whole percent. Look at how small that is. In fact, this is 185 100 thousandths of just 1% chance that you'll be dealt four aces in a five-card hand that's dealt. 
that amazing? How small that probability is there. Okay. So do you see how we computed that probability? Um, so, you know, in all honesty, what's the more difficult um, number of outcomes to enumerate? Is it the numerator of a ratio probability or the denominator? You know what? In all honesty, it's the numerator. Trying to figure out how many ways you can be dealt four aces with a five-card hand or five cards that are dealt. The numerator of your probabilities, as I think you'll discover, is the more challenging uh, number to enumerate. The denominator is usually a little bit easier in the sense that we have 52 cards to choose from. How many ways can we choose five cards from 52? Order doesn't matter. That's just simply 52 in combination with five. But the numerator is a little bit more mysterious. And you'll discover that in general, that is the case when computing probabilities in this section. It's the numerator that poses a challenge. Okay. All right, let's look at another example. Example three, a combination lock has 40 numbers on it from zero to 39. So envision like a combination lock, you know, maybe one of those that, you, you know, you twirl the wheel, correct? It has 40 numbers on it, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 39. Find the probability that if the combination to unlock it consists of three numbers, the combination will contain the numbers of 1, 2, and 3 in some order. I have a question for you, ladies and gentlemen. Does the order in which these three digits, okay, of this combination, does the order matter in order to unlock this lock? In other words, is the combination of one, two, three necessarily the same as the combination of three, two, one? Do you think order matters here with the combination of selecting three digits to, un to unlock this thing? Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, the combination one, two, three is a lot different than the combination of two, one, three, or three, two, one, or three, one, two. Okay. So since order matters, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic in a way that they call this a combination lock. This is not a combination at all because order matters. They really should call it what kind of a lock, not a combination lock, but, uh, what do you think? It should really be called not a combination lock, but uh, if order matters, a permutation. permutation lock. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, and that ironic, they call it a combination lock instead of a permutation lock. Technically, it is a permutation lock because order matters here. Assume that the numbers cannot be repeated in, in the combination. In other words, you cannot have a combination that's like 222 two, two, or 333 three, three, or 111 or 101010. Or 10, 10, 10, okay. So no repeats. All right. So as I'm how would we find this probability? That if the combination to unlock it consists of three numbers in a specific order. Um it will contain the numbers of one, two, three in some specific order. Well, the first thing we need to try to figure out is how many different orders are there for the three numbers of one, two, three? That would be a what? Not a combination, but a, a permutation where we have three numbers to select from and we want them to be in a specific order. So it seems to me like if our combination is to consist of the, the digits one, two, and three in some specific order, we need to find out how many different orders there are for the digits of one, two, and three. That would be three permuted three ways. So this is going to be your numerator of your probability ratio here. There's six different ways of writing the numbers three, uh, one, two, three in a specific order. Okay, um, let's see if we can just write those different orders down here. One, two, three would be one specific ordering of those three digits. Uh, what would be another order here? We could have three 
one, two. Or we could have two, what? Three, one. Right? Any others? Well, I could have, let's say, uh, one, three, two. Or I could have what? Two, one, three. Or I could have what? Three, two, one. Do you agree? There you go. There's, I mean, there's six different ways of ordering uh, the three numbers, one, two, and three. Six different ways. And of these six different ways, all right, um, all of them contain the digits one, two, and three. All right. So there's six different ways. Now, the denominator. How many ways, how many combinations, uh, or ladies, I'm gonna, how many ways can I choose three digits from 40 digits if order matters? Well, that's a permutation. That's going to be 40 permuted three ways, which gives us 59,280 different ways of choosing three numbers from 40 numbers in a specific order where order matters. So therefore, the probability of a combination containing the numbers of one, two, and three in any specific order is going to be six divided by, okay, 59,280, which gives us a very small probability there. That's only one one hundredth of one percent chance that uh, a combination consisting of three digits will contain the digits one, two, and three in some specific order. All right. Very small probability. Are any of these making sense so far here? Probability, computing probabilities, ladies and gentlemen, is challenging. I know it blew me out of the water when I first ran into these many years ago. It took years to mature with these, okay? But you have to start somewhere. And that's why we're, we're having you start here to just kind of view how some of these are put together here, these probabilities, okay? But some are, you know, some are challenging in general. It takes time to, you know, have, have this sink in your mind here, okay? But you have to start somewhere. And that's why we're showing you how to compute some of these probabilities here. All right, let's go on with here. Now, there's a second part to this question. It says, if numbers can be repeated in the combination, then this will have no effect on the outcomes that contain one, two, or three in some specific order. We've already enumerated all those possibilities. There's six possible arrangements of, of a combination having the digits one, two, or three in some specific order. So if we impose this other restriction here that uh, we can have repeats, it does not affect the numerator of this probability, this new probability we're trying to compute. But ladies and gentlemen, it will affect the denominator, okay? Because you see, in computing this probability uh, for the first question, we had 40 permuted three ways, which is essentially to say, okay, which is essentially saying you have three slots and you have 40 digits to populate these slots. The first slot can be populated in what? 40 different ways. The second slot, because there were no repeats in the first question, can pop be populated only 39 different ways. But now we left two digits out. And so we only have 38 digits remaining to populate the third slot. This is if um, you cannot have any repeats. And when you multiply these together, this gives you your 59,000, what, 280. That's a permutation. That was the denominator of the probability of the first question. But look at now, ladies and gentlemen, if they say there is repeats that are possible in this three-digit combination, now we have 40 digits to occupy the first slot times we have 40 digits to occupy the second slot times 40 digits to occupy this third slot. Now our denominator of the second probability 
changes. In fact, it's much larger. It's not just 59,280. It's going to be 40 times 40 times 40, uh, which is going to be, let's see, 4 times 4 is 16. It'll be 1,600 times 4 is uh, 64, what, thousand? Is that correct, I believe? I believe that's 64,000. Do you agree? So if you can have repeated digits, there's 64,000 different ways of forming a three-digit co combination, okay, where repeats are, um, you know, allowed. So you could have one combination that would be the, like, be 10, 10, 10. Or you could have a combination that would be 20, 20, 20. All right. Or you could have a combination that could be 20, 20, maybe 39. So there's 64,000 different uh, three-digit combinations where, or, where repeats are allowed then. Because there's more possible arrangements of three-digit uh, combinations where repeats are possible, that's going to affect our probability, the second probability. So therefore, the probability, ladies and gentlemen, of, of um, having a, co a three-digit combination where we have the digits of one, two, three in some specific order is going to be 6 divided by 64,000, which is an even smaller probability now that we have uh, the three digits, one, two, and three in some specific order in our combination, three-digit combination. So whether there are or are not repeats does affect the denominator of the probabilities we're trying to compute. It does not affect the numerator, though. There's only six, there's still six different ways of having one, two, or three occur in some specific order. Okay. All right, here's another example. A store has six different fitness magazines and three different news magazines for a total of nine different magazines. If a customer buys three magazines at random, find the probability that he'll pick two fitness magazines and one news magazine. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you think order matters in which these magazines are selected? Is there anything in this problem that alludes to anything regarding order? No. Doesn't really look like it. I don't think it matters in what order these three magazines are chosen from the nine magazines. Therefore, we should be thinking combination. All right. So now, in order to compute this probability that you'll pick two fitness magazines and one news magazine, we have to enumerate, first of all, ladies and gentlemen. So we're trying to compute the probability that he'll choose what again? Two fitness magazines, FM short for fitness, fitness magazines, and one what? News magazine, NM news magazine. Well, how many different ways can we select two fitness, fitness magazines and one news magazine well, how many ways can we choose two fitness magazines from how many fitness magazines? There's six. How many different ways can I choose two fitness magazines from six mag magazine, fitness magazines if order does not matter? That would be six in combination with what, two? And means times, times. How many ways can I choose one um, news magazine from three different news magazines if order does not matter. That'll be three in combination with one. So this is the number of ways of choosing two fitness magazines and one news magazine if, ladies and gentlemen, we choose three magazines. And I want to point something very important out of these combinations here. These numbers must always add up to how many magazines you're choosing. We're choosing three magazines. Okay. So this is the total number of ways of choosing two fitness, uh, excuse me, of choosing uh, two fitness magazines and one news magazine. Let's get on our calculator and dial this up. What does that give you there? So bring up our calculator here.
We got six in combination with two, so six in combination with two times three in combination with one. Ladies and gentlemen, there's 45 different ways of choosing, okay, two fitness magazines and one news magazine if order does not matter. There's 45 different ways. So our numerator is 45. But now we've got to figure out our denominator. Well, how many magazines do we have total to choose from? We have six plus three or nine total magazines to choose from. Six plus three. Nine magazines to choose from, and we need to choose three at random where order does not matter. So the denominator is going to be nothing more than nine in combination with three. And what is nine in combination with three? Well, let's go back and dial it up on our calculator. Nine in combination with three gives me there's 84 different ways, 84 different ways of choosing three magazines from nine magazines where order does not matter. Get on your calculator and divide, and you have the probability of selecting two fitness magazines and one news magazine. So 45 divided by 84 is going to be 0.536 about. About 0.536. This is approximately equal to, and I should use the wavy equal signs here. So about a 54% chance that you're going to, when you randomly select three magazines from these nine magazines, that two of them will be fitness magazines, and one of them will be a news magazine. Question is how we computed that probability there. Hopefully that's making some sort of sense in your mind, ladies and gentlemen. So this is just going through, uh, there's 45 ways of choosing two fitness magazines and uh, one news magazine. And there's 84 ways of choosing three magazines from nine and they divide 45 by 84 and get 0.536, okay? All right, now that we did uh, this PowerPoint presentation, let's go in our textbook and see if we can have a little bit of fun. And these questions are gonna come from section 10.5 in our textbook here. All right, that's assuming that we're going to be able to access our textbook today. Don't let me down. All right, 10.5. Uh, entitled Probability Using Permutations and Combinations. And if you get a chance, you can look down through this these problems here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're noticing a lot of these questions we've already covered on the PowerPoint, these examples. All right, so most of these are like repeats. Here's your combination lock, correct? All right, let's just go down to the problems here and see if we can have a little bit of fun. All right, the first problem I would like you to entertain is number 11. We'll call this classwork number one. I want you to try to do this problem, ladies and gentlemen. 
A student faculty government committee of four people is to be formed from 20 student volunteers and five faculty volunteers. Find the probability that the committee will consist of the following, assuming the selection is made at random and order does not matter. Okay, we don't really care in what order we select these people. There's no distinction. There's no seat for like president or vice president or treasurer. Okay, none of that stuff. So what's the probability that if we select four people randomly from these, from the total number of people we have, and we do have what, 25 people total to select from, what's the probability that all of the uh, people will be faculty members? B, what's the probability that two students, we will select two students and two faculty members for our four people? And what's the probability that all four will be students? And finally, D, what's the probability that one will be a faculty member and three will be students? All right, go ahead and see if you can compute those probabilities, A through D, 11A through D. We'll call this classwork number one.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's look at these over here and see if you had any sort of success. The probability when we select four members to be on this committee that all of them are fact faculty members is going to be equal to um, five in combination with four because we have five faculty members and we want all four to be faculty members. Times, we have 20 students, but we want zero of the students to be on the committee because we want all faculty members. When you multiply these together, you're going to have five. So there's five ways of choosing all faculty members to be on this committee, if order does not matter. Divided by how many ways can we select four people from 25 people? Because we have 20 students and five faculty. So that's 25 total people in combination with four. 12,650 different ways of choosing four people from 25 people if order doesn't matter. Do the division and your probability of selecting all faculty members would be 0 0.000395. Did anybody get anything close to that? Yes. Notice the four and the zero here add up to the size of our committee. There's four people on our committee. All right, B, what's the probability that we select two students and two faculty members to be on this four person committee? Well, how many ways can I select two students from 20 students if order doesn't matter? That's 20 in combination with two times. I have five faculty members to select from and I wanna make sure there's two of them on the committee. Five in combination with two is the number of ways of selecting two faculty members from five faculty members if order doesn't matter. Multiply these together, you get 1,900. Divided by the same old denominator, 25 in combination with four, and you get a probability of 0 0.150. Did anybody get that? Who do you want to get that? Well, if not, if not uh, you can see you see how it's done here. We're C, what's the probability that we select all students to be on the committee? Well, we have 20 students to choose from, and we need to make sure that all four of our selections are students. So there's 20 in combination with four different ways of choosing four students from 20 students if order does not matter. Times five in combination with zero because we have five faculty members to choose from, but we don't want to choose any of them to be on the committee. When you multiply these out, you get 4,845 ways of choosing all students. Divided by the total number of ways of choosing four students from 25 people, or number of ways of choosing four people from 25 people is 12,650. Do the division and you get about a 38% chance of selecting all students to be on the four-person committee. Finally, what's the probability that we select one faculty and three students to be on this four-person committee? Well, how many ways can I select one faculty from five faculties members if the order doesn't matter? That's five in combination with one. Times, how many ways can I select three students from 20 students if order doesn't matter? 20 in combination with three. Divided by how many ways can I select four people from 25 people, 25 in combination with four, order doesn't matter, do the division, there's about a 45% chance that you will select one faculty member and three students to be on this four-person committee. Has anybody, uh, did anybody get any of those last two there? Any of those, correct? All right, that's classwork number one, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's move on now. Uh, let's see what time it is here. Twenty. That was number eleven. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's do another problem that's just like this problem, okay? 
You see, the more of these you see done and you actually attempt, you're going to get better. Slowly but surely, you will mature with this. All right, let's try to do problem number 13 here. This will be in classwork number two. I want you to try to do this problem. It's done in a very similar way that number 11 was done. A city council consists of 10 members. Four are Republicans, three are Democrats, and three are Independents. If a committee of three is to be selected, we're ordered as a matter. Find the probability of selecting all Republicans, all Democrats, one of each party, two Democrats and one Independent, one Independent and two Republicans. As I'm going to answer questions 13A through, through E, we'll call this classwork number two.
Okay. So we're trying to form a three-person committee. We have 10 uh, people to choose from. Uh, in A, 13A, what's the probability that all of our random selections will be Republicans? Well, we have four Republicans to choose from. So how many ways can we select three Republicans from four Republicans if order doesn't matter? That's four in combination with three. Times we have three Democrats, but we don't want to select any Democrats to be on the committee. So three in combination with zero is the number of ways of selecting no Democrats from three. Times we have three independents and we don't want any independents to be on the committee. So there's three in combination with zero ways of choosing uh, no independents from three independents. Notice that three plus zero plus zero adds up to the size of our committee. There's four ways to, to select three Republicans from four Republicans if order doesn't matter. Divided by what's the total number of ways or the total number of outcomes in our sample space. The total number of ways of choosing three people from 10 people. How did I get 10 people? Four Republicans plus three Democrats plus three independents is 10 total people. And how many ways can we choose three people to be on our committee from 10 people? That's 10 in combination with three. Order doesn't matter. There's 120 different ways of choosing three people from 10 people. Four divided by 120 gives you the probability of selecting all Republicans. Did anybody get that probability correct? Yes. Okay, very good. We're starting to get this a little bit here now. Now it says, what's the probability of selecting all Democrats to be on a three-person committee? Well, how many Democrats do we have to choose from? We have three of them. So there's three in combination with three ways of choosing all Democrats. Times, and we don't want to have any Dem any Republicans on our committee. So there's four in combination with zero ways of zero ways of choosing uh, no Republicans out of four Republicans. And we don't want any independents on our committee. So there's three in combination with zero ways of choosing no independents from three independents. Well, ladies and gentlemen. This is interesting because when you figure out three in combination with three, you get one. This is one and this is one. So there's only one way to choose three Democrats to be on our third person, three person committee. It makes sense that there's only one way because we only have three Democrats. So there's only one way to select the three Democrats where order doesn't matter to be on our committee. That makes sense why our numerator is one. The denominator is still 120, one divided by 120 gives you about an eight-tenths of one percent chance that when we randomly select three people from these 10 people, that all of them will be Democrats. Did anybody get that probability computed? Yes. Yeah, I did. Okay. See? What's the probability that when we make a three-person selection from our 10 people, that one of them will be a Republican and one will be a Democrat and one will be an independent. Well, how many ways can we choose one Republican from the four that we have to choose from? That'll be four in combination with one times. How many ways could I choose one Democrat from the three Democrats available? Three in combination with one times. How many ways could I choose one independent from the three that are available? Three in combination with one. Notice one plus one plus one is equal to the size of my committee. One plus one plus one, the size of my committee. Anyways, you dial this up on your calculator and you get 36 six different ways of choosing one Republican and one Democrat and one independent. Divided by how many ways can I choose three people from 10 people? 120 ways. 36 divided by 120 then is the probability of selecting one Republican, one Democrat, and one Independent. A 30% chance. Did anybody get that one correct? All right. Is this making any sense how we're computing these probabilities here so far? Using these combinations. Finally, so e, okay, so e says, what's the probability of selecting one Independent and two Republicans? Well, of the three uh, independents that I have to choose from, how many ways can I select one of them where order does not matter? Well, that would be three in combination with one. 
and means times. Times, how many ways can I select two Republicans from the four I have available if order doesn't matter? That'll be four in combination with two. But so ladies and gentlemen, there's 18 different ways of choosing one independent and two Republicans if order does not matter. Divided by what's the total number of ways of selecting three people to be on the committee from 10 people available. That's 120. Do the division, you get 0.15. There's a 15% chance that when we randomly select three people from the 10 people available, one of them will be an independent and two of them will be, will be Republicans. All right, that's classwork number two. Hopefully this is starting to make a little bit more sense in computing these types of probabilities here using our combinations, okay? All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like us to compute a different one, a different probability, one that is different. Uh, that would be problem number uh, 16. Let's go to number 16 in our textbook. Notice 14 and 15 are similar to the ones we just did. 16 is different, though. Here's how 16 reads. There are 50 tickets sold for a raffle for a student art auction. And there are two prizes. And so, ladies and gentlemen, there's two winning tickets of the 50 tickets. There's two winning tickets offered. There's two prizes to be awarded. If Deontay buys two tickets, find the probability that he'll win both prizes. I want you to think about that problem. See if you can do that for classwork number three. Okay? Just think it over. See if you can do something with this. Number 16, classwork three.
Okay. So what's the probability that if you buy two tickets, you're going to win both prizes? Well, there's only two winning tickets out there. Okay. And of the two winning tickets, how many ways can we select two of them? Well, that's two in combination with two, because the order in which we select these two winning tickets does not matter. So there's only one way, ladies and gentlemen, to select two winning tickets when we select two tickets. There's only two winning tickets. Divided by how many different ways, though, can I select two tickets from 50 tickets total? Where order doesn't matter. Well, that's 50 in combination with two, which is 1,225 different ways of selecting two tickets from 50 tickets if order doesn't matter. So there the prop, therefore, the probability you're going to win both prizes is going to be one way out of 1,225 ways, there's your probability. It's small. It's like eight hundredths of 1% chance of winning both prizes. Anybody compute that? Yes. Hmm? Well, it's number 16. All right. Let's um, move on now. Um, that was number 16. If we can try number uh, 19 in our textbook. Find the probability of getting any triple digit number where all digits are the same in a lottery game. Where all digits are the same in a lot lottery game that consists of selecting a three digit number. Okay. Well, all digits are the same in a lottery game. And later on, the digits we have to select from are going to be zero through nine. All the way on up to nine. Okay. All right, think about this problem, problem, see if you can compute this probability. This will be a classwork. I don't know, what is it, three or four? Whatever, it's a classwork. Try that problem there, number 19.
All right, so they want to know the probability of selecting um, triple digits. Um, the probability of selecting triple digits where all the digits are the same in a lottery game that consists of selecting a three-digit number. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, how many different ways can you select triple digits? You could select 000, 111, 222, 333, 444, 555, 666, 777, 888, Okay, that's 10 ways. So there's 10 ways to select a triple digit number for a lottery game. So the probability of selecting triple digits is equal to 10 ways of selecting a triple digit number divided by what's the total number of ways you could select a three digit number for a lottery game. Well, think of having three mailboxes or three slots. We have 10 ways to select the first digit times using the fundamental principle of counting, 10 ways to select the second digit, times 10 ways to select the third digit. This is your probability of selecting a triple digit number. 10 divided by 1,000, which is 1 over 100, which is 0 0.01. You have a 1% chance of selecting a triple digit number for a three-digit lottery game. Did anybody get that probability correct? I didn't. All right. Do you, does that make sense? Why it is this though? Yeah, it makes sense. And like I said, probabilities are weird. Um, they can be tricky. They can be hard to understand at times. Um, I know some of these blew me out of the water. Like I said, when I was uh, going to school, it took me time to you know mature with some of these things here. They're not e some of these are just not easy to understand. Some are very easy and very intuitive, but some are not. All right. Let's see if we can try another one out of our textbook, number 22. See if you can uh, entertain this one in your mind. It says a five-digit identification card is made. Find the probability that the card will contain the digits of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 in any order. So a five-digit ID card is made. Find the probability that the card will contain the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 in any order. And again, ladies and gentlemen, the digits we have to select from are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way on up to 9, okay? There's a little bit of a hint that uh, will give you a little better chance here. All right, go ahead and see if we can do number 22, compute this probability. <clears throat> Another hint, another hint for this problem is that order does matter, okay? Whether you choose the digits in the order of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 is going to be different than if you make an ID card where the order is like 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Order matters here. There's a hint.
Okay. So they want to know what the probability of choosing um, for a five-digit ID card, uh, um, a card that has zero, one, two, three, and four in some sort of specific order. Well, how many ways can we arrange these five numbers, zero, one, two, three, four, in a specific order? That would be given by this permutation. Five permuted five ways of ordering these five digits in some specific way. Divided by how many, okay, how many ways can we choose five digits from, ted, from 10 digits, zero through nine, in order to make a five-digit ID card where you could have repeats? Well, that's going to be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, or 10 to the fifth power. So five and permuted five ways is 120 different ways of having these in some specific order. And so 120 divided by um, 100,000, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be 0 0.0012. And that would be your probability of forming a five-digit ID card where these digits are in some specific order. Anybody get that probability there? Yes. All right. Now, try another one here. Number 23 in our textbook. We'll try that one. Combination lock, which we really found is more like a permutation lock, um, has 40 numbers from 0 to 39. And a combination consists of three numbers in a specific order with no repeats. Find the probability that the combination consists only of even numbers. Think about that one, ladies and gentlemen, and see if you can compute this probability. Here's a hint. Of the digits from 0 to 39, how many of the digits are even digits? You're going to need to know that. All right, try to do number 23.
So <clears throat> this combination is to be three digits. And the digits that we have in our, uh, to choose from are from zero to 39. How many even numbers are there between zero to 39 here? Well, actually there's 20 of them, ladies and gentlemen. Zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, dot, 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 all the way up to 38. There's 20 even digits, okay? And um, how many different ways can I choose three even digits from these 20 even digits that are available where order matters. That would be 20 permuted three ways. There's 6,840 different ways of choosing three even digits from these 20 even digits where order matters. In other words, the combination two, four, six is different than the combination six, two, four, which is different than the combination of six, four, two. These are different. Different combinations, order matters. Divided by how many ways can I choose three digits or three numbers from 40 numbers? Well, where order matters. There's That would be 40 permuted three ways, which is to say there's 59,280 ways of forming a three number combination if we have 40 numbers to choose from, zero through 39 where order matters. Divide, and you get the probability that your combination will consist of only even numbers. <laughs> About 11.5% chance. Anybody get that probability? Here? That's number 23. All right, let's try problem 25 from our textbook. The instructions read this way. You know, in one lottery game, contestants pick five numbers from one through 40 and have to match all five numbers for the big prize in any order. So in other words, ladies and gentlemen, order does not matter in which you choose the five numbers. As long as you choose the correct five numbers on a five number ticket, you win the big one, okay? 25, what is the probability you'll win if you buy one ticket? Your hint is the chances are not good. Well, we can probably, you know, surmise that. But see if you can compute this probability that if you buy one ticket, which has five numbers on it, what's the probability you're going to match all five winning numbers in whatever order they are chosen? In other words, if the winning numbers are this, say, one, two, three, four, five, whether your ticket has one, two, three, four, five on it, or has five, four, three, two, one on it, or some other order of those five digits or five numbers, you will win the big of the big prize, the jackpot. So ladies, what's the probability that you'll win if you buy one ticket? Do that for a classwork problem. Think about that. See if you can compute that one.
So if you buy a if you buy one five number ticket, what's the probability you match all five numbers? Where the order in which those five numbers are selected does not matter. Well, it's a combination. It's five in combination with five. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one way to select all five winning numbers. Let's say the winning numbers are one, two, three, four, five. So if you buy a ticket that has one, two, three, four, five on it, you win the bet jackpot. If you buy a ticket that has the numbers five, four, three, two, one on it, you win the jackpot because those are the same winning tickets. This order doesn't matter. Divided by how many ways can you buy a five number ticket if you have 40 numbers to select from where order does not matter? That's 40 in combination with five, which is 658,008 ways. So your chance of winning the jackpot with one ticket is one divided by 658,008. This is the probability of winning this game, winning the jackpot. Even if you move your desk point two places to the right, that's a minuscule, almost non-existent percent chance that you're going to win this game. You can see why they say the odds are not good for winning this jackpot here. Anybody get that? All right. Number 26. This one's even tougher. You get second prize in the lottery game that was mentioned above if you match four of the five numbers. Find the probability of winning second prize if you buy five tickets. So in other, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, to win second prize, you have to match four of the five numbers. And you buy five tickets. What's your probability of winning second prize then? Go ahead and see if you can do anything with this problem. This is a difficult problem. If you get it, uh, you are in an elite class. Okay. It's a difficult problem. See if you can get it though. And again, the order in which you select the four winning numbers of the five could occur in any order. Order does not matter. So like if one, two, three, four are the winning four digits, if you select a ticket that is like one, two, three, four, and then maybe the number 20, that's the same ticket as if you select the number 20 and then four, three, two, one, same winning ticket.
All right. So if you buy one ticket and play this lottery game, and what's the probability of matching four of the five uh, winning numbers here? Well, there are five winning numbers. Of the 40 numbers, there's five winning numbers. And you're trying to match four of them. So of the five winning numbers, four, okay, we're, we're concerned about matching four. So how many ways can you select four of the winning numbers from five of the winning numbers in any order. That's represented by five in combination with four. And, ladies and gentlemen, but this is only a ticket of four numbers you selected. And you need to select another number because it's got to be a five-digit uh, five uh, or five-number ticket. So you selected four of the matching numbers. That leaves 40 minus, uh, wait a minute here. You selected, um, well, you selected one five number ticket, okay? And four of the numbers are matching tickets. So how many numbers do you have left to select for the, um, the numbers that don't match? Well, there's 35 numbers left because 40 minus um, five is 35. And we need to select one more number here so that we have a ticket that has five numbers on it. So when you multiply these guys together, you get 175 divided by, now how many ways can you select a five number ticket from 40 numbers if order does not matter? That's 40 in combination with five, which is a six, 658,000, eight different ways. So 175 divided by this big number in the bottom here gives you this probability of winning this lottery game by matching four of the five numbers. That's just with one ticket, but you purchase five tickets. And so the probability of winning um, second prize by matching four of the five numbers is gonna be five times, five times this. So five times the probability of winning with one ticket gives you the probability of winning with five tickets. And that would be your probability of winning with five tickets having been purchased there, okay? Right. So this, this problem here is a little bit more complicated um, of a problem. And um, I don't know if I'll give you one, you know. I'm not going to give you many if I even give you one uh, that complicated. Um, the other ones that are fair game that we worked out, especially like, excuse me. <laughs> Like problems number 11, 12, and 13, those are all fair game questions, ladies and gentlemen. Those are uh, much more understandable. But this problem here, like number, uh, the last one we just did, is uh, harder to uh, gain a foothold on mentally. So I'm not going to give you too many of those, all right? But today we did look at how to use our permutations and combinations to compute um, slightly more complicated probabilities. And <laughs> so that wraps up today. I'll be on the line for a couple minutes if you have any questions or comments. If not, um, have a great weekend. Um, won't the homework for 10.4 and 5 be posted? All right. Um, I have to update the homework in Alex, and I will get that updated. 10.4 and 10.5. See if I can do that in a couple minutes after this class, okay? Okay. All right.